Tim Burton Caricature Self-Portraits. Today we learned about the artwork of Tim Burton, a famous movie director, animator, and stop-motion film designer. His style is very specific and unique. He likes to see things in a different way. Today we're going to see ourselves in a different way by cartooning our own self-portrait in the style of Tim Burton. Before we begin creating our own self-portrait, practice does help you become better. So in your sketchbook, we will practice making duplications of the images you see on the left. For the next three pages of the sketchbook, we'll practice making heads, eyes, noses, and mouths. Once you finish practicing those duplications, now you get to have a little fun and create your own versions of people. Using the head, eyes, nose, and mouth examples, you will use those to create different caricatures or animations. Practice making several different shapes of heads, use different hairstyles, create girls and boys. Don't make anything graphic or scary, but try to keep things friendly. the page with several different characters. Once you've done that, you're ready to go and start creating your own ideas for your self-portrait. Once you've decided on your head, eyes, nose, and mouth, that will help you when you go to your practice sketch. So plan what head shape, eye shape, nose shape, and mouth shape you want to use first. Then go to the hair part of your sketchbook and you will practice making several different hair designs on the back page. If you're a boy, I want you to experiment with different boy hairstyles. If you're a girl, I want you to experiment with different female ha hairstyles. Now we're to the part where we're going to practice putting it all together. Take a piece of paper. In this video, you see gray. We'll use gray paper for the final example. But in class today, I want you to take a blank sheet of paper and practice doing this larger. With a pencil, you will practice putting your head down first, then your neck, long and skinny, followed by ears, then place your hair next. Put your eyes, nose, and mouth on the paper. If you don't like the way this practice paper looks, you can practice again on the back, and you can use a total of two pieces of paper for your practice. We won't go into shading today. We're just working on practicing filling in our eyes, nose, mouth, head, and hair. Once your sketchbook is complete and your practice version of your self-portrait is complete, you are ready to go to the final project. The final project will be on a piece of gray paper. On the gray paper, I want you to put your head shape on first. Leave an opening at the top to complete your hair, so don't close that off just yet. Add ears, which are always small, and the neck is thin and long. You should have already chosen your hair, so when you go to add that in, add the bangs first, or the lines that create the hairline in front, and then go behind and add the line to create hair. Add the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Also include small details like glasses, freckles, or uh, any additional things you'd like to add to your final project. Once that's sketched in and you have it the way you want it to look, We'll go in and add dimension and depth through shading. This will give your Tim Burton sketch some shape. By adding shading, we're going to give this sketch some dimension and shape. For the eyes, color them in with a white colored pencil. This creates a nice contrast. Take your black color pencil and darken some of the spots around the eye, like glasses or the shape of the circle. 
make that a little darker so the white really stands out against the black. Go underneath the eye and take your pencil and don't press down too firmly but gently go back and forth and this will create a nice shade around the edge of the eye. So on each side of the eye, shade those in. Go down the bridge of the nose and around the ears and underneath the neck. So the spots I want you to focus on are ears, neck, and around the eye for shading. You can contour the face, add a little more structure with some shading. And around the forehead, maybe where the hairline meets the face. Create some contrast with that white color pencil. Go over areas like under the cheek bone, under glasses. So everything we just shaded, uh, on the t near that, add some white. So on the bridge of the nose, I'm shading. On the, the cheeks, I'm shading a little bit of white. Underneath the neck, I'll also shade some white. This creates some strong contrast. I'm adding lines to the hair so it doesn't look flat and it gives it more dimension. And I'm also going to shade in the entire hair. Noticing how I'm going over one more time with a dark contrast for the glasses so they really pop. And now I'm going to shade underneath the hair and around the entire head. Now that you're done with your sketch, we are ready to put it in the final frame. The final framing, will, we will use a 12 by 18 piece of construction paper. Put a small amount of glue around the edges and maybe a cross or dot in the middle. Don't overload your paper with glue stick glue or it will start to wrinkle. Put just enough around the edges and in the center and then flip it over and pet it like a puppy is usually what I say, which is basically just go back and forth over the paper with your hand and make sure it's nice and stuck on very firmly because we'll be hanging these on the wall. In the very back of your sketchbook, you are going to see several examples of a frame that you can choose to use. You can pick any of these frame options. There's a circle, some rectangle frames. If you choose to use a circle frame, cut the edges of your paper before you glue it on to be more rounded and you will create a more rounded edge of that frame. I can show you in the class about how to make a circle frame if that's the direction you wanna go in or an oval shape. I have chosen to use the design in the far right corner of the sketchbook and this is a series of lines, so you will be using diagonal lines to create the upper portion, a lot of slants going on, three curved lines um, on the edges. You can change this however you want it to be. And I draw a straight line vertically coming down and those notches at the side and a little bit of the same design at the bottom with some diagonal lines and then draw a vertical line coming up and inside of the frame add a little detail by mirroring those lines on the inside and creating little notches and um, divots within the frame. Once you have your design, you can add whatever you want to this frame. It does not have to look like mine, make it your own and it the project will be complete. Don't forget to sign your name. You are the artist in the upper or lower corner. I would suggest maybe the up the lower left corner or the lower right corner, write your name so we know who we're looking at. And can't wait to see how they turn out.